Alrighty, everybody, and welcome to the Nintendo Pulse podcast, episode number 45. As always, I'm your host, Lloyd Hannison. Joining me, Stephen Munn. Stephen, how you doing? Good, Lloyd. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. Can't complain. Not as good as you. I didn't find a rare piece of gaming memorabilia slash boxing stuff, um, but, I, but I'm doing good. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you could always try. <laughs> I, I could. Um, I, I won't, but I could. I definitely could. If you do decide to, I recommend collecting something that just came into existence within the past few days. That would be good. It's like, boom, collection done. All right. Yeah. I'm awesome. I completed it. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. All right. Well, let's get into the show. Uh, St- Steven, how, how you been, my friend? I mean, it's it's been, we, we missed a week. I wanted to first off apologize for missing a week. Um, had some, some stuff happening. Couldn't do a show. So my apologies to everybody that showed up last week because it was kind of a last minute thing. Um, try not to make it a habit, so hopefully we won't uh, miss a week for uh, quite some time now. That would be nice. Yes. All right. Um, before we get into the show, just wanted to mention that we are a member of the Tech Podcast Network. So find other shows like this one over at techpodcasts.com. Uh, stuff about tech, stuff about games, stuff about anything geeky. You can find it over at techpodcasts.com. All right. Let's get into the show. Uh, Steven. What have you been playing, my friend? Oh, let's see. Um, I bought uh, Fez. I pre-ordered Fez on Steam um, when they announced it a couple of weeks ago. Right. And then I forgot about it. <laughs> and then it came out day before yesterday. Right. And uh, last yesterday I saw a tweet about it and I said, oh, yeah, I need to boot my iMac to Windows <laughs> so that I can install Fez and play it. So I can get the thing that I paid for. Exactly. So, um, well, they were offering like a, I think it was a 20% discount if you pre-ordered it. So, and it was only, right. I think it was only 10 to begin with. So mm, that's like pretty bucks. good. That's pretty good. Yeah. <clears throat> so I downloaded and I installed it and, um, I started the game and all I got was a black screen and the sound was there, but just a black screen. <laughs> um, so I hit the windows key or, uh, I think it's the. It's either the option or the command key on my Mac keyboard that maps to that. Mm-hmm. And um, that brought up the Steam window, and then I clicked back, and everything seemed fine. And I'm like, okay. So I walked Gomez around and walked out of the room. And it happened again. Every time I go from any room to another room, the screen goes completely black, and I have to reset the window in order for it to no way to display. So the workaround I came up with was running it in windowed mode, and that seemed to solve the issue. Oh, okay. So now I just play it windowed, and it seems fine. Um, <clears throat> what do you think? What do you think of Fez uh, now that you're not staring into the big black abyss? Or did you think that was maybe <laughs> part of the uh, of the um, I don't know the the message, the the hidden meaning behind the game? Yeah, I thought I thought that. I thought maybe it was part of the game, like, okay, so maybe I'm in a dark room and I have to figure out where the lamp is or something like that. Because I could he- still hear the sound and it didn't seem like anything was wrong. It just, I couldn't see what was going on. So um, I tried running around a little bit and I'm like, no, something's wrong here. This is, this, something's not right. So luckily I was able to figure it out pretty quick. But um, I think that it's a really good looking game. Mm-hmm. Um, the blend of like sprite work and polygons is really really interesting and and very different um i like it it's a little bit uh a little bit baffling at times i mean i know it's it's like a puzzle platformer and that's the way it's supposed to be but it's like one of those things where you know i'll i'll get to a point where i'll be steadily making progress through a level and i'll get somewhere and i'll have no idea what to do and i'll be like you know what i'm not doing that and I'm just like <laughs> back up and go somewhere else in the world. And, and I'm still at a point where there's plenty of other places to go. So it doesn't so much matter. Nice. Um, <clears throat> and like I got a bunch of the cubes and, and I'm supposed to go back to the room with all the doors in it. And I, I can't remember where that room is. I, I don't know how to get back to that room. But luckily the world is amazing enough and beautiful enough where I don't mind wandering around lost for a while. Um, nice. But I'm only an hour or two in. Uh, let me see what I can do about this mic noise for you here. Yeah, getting a lot of uh, a lot of rumblings and stuff from you. Okay, let me see if I've got my other line in. Built in is off. Can you tap your mic? 
Yeah, that's the one. I don't know. Weird. Yeah, okay. Uh, I checked the other two, and, and that's it. Let me see the settings in Skype here. Should be fine. I'm getting I'm getting the the, the noise from the right mic. It must do, you could have just been moving around a little bit or something. Oh, not a big deal. All right, not, not a big deal. Uh, let's see. Aside from Fez, um, Find Me Two. I got the last hat in Find Me Two today, <laughs> and I am too uh, too annoying about this. I'm two puzzle pieces away from completing the last puzzle, which are the, the two pink pieces from. Luigi's Mansion, and I should be getting at least one of them tomorrow morning, if not both. You know, I, I, I thought I was a completionist. I am not a completionist, Stephen. You are. <laughs> you are. You, you, you're trying to collect everything, not not just some of stuff. You're collecting. Your, your collection is everything. All of the things. Collect all of the collect things. Collect all I of all of the things exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um. Let's see what else. Oh, Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story. Um. When when I saw that Nintendo Direct event when they were announcing the new Mario and Luigi, I was like, oh, oh, I love those Mario and Luigi games, but I never beat Bowser's Inside Story. And I'm like, well, I could play that on my 3DS XL. So I popped it back in, nice. and I'm staring at it, and I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be able to figure out where I am. And I just started <laughs> walking, and I just immediately picked up <clears throat> what was going on. So I don't know if it's just really good game design or or I was lucky, but... I got right back into it right away. So I'm plugging my way through. That. Prometheus in the chat room says, Stephen, <laughs> Stephen makes my OCD seem just fine. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. You guys are awesome. I love the chat room. Mm -hmm. Cool. So Bowser's Inside Story. Yeah. I, you know, I've done that with some games before. Not that game in particular. But yeah, just uh, pick up partway through and it's just like, oh, where was I? What was I doing? And it's amazing how quickly that comes back to you. It, it, yeah. is, it is really amazing. And that's a really complicated game with the whole, you know, being inside Bowser, being outside Bowser, and mm -hmm. you know the part that um, the part that I'm at in it has Mario and Luigi running around inside Bowser, and Bowser's in the outside, and he walks over and he punches the X-ray machine, and then you're running around inside as Mario and Luigi, you know, seeing all that. So mm -hmm. exactly, and that's pretty much it. Cool, cool. I, I too have played Fez, but not I played it on my 360 a while ago, and I didn't get much further than you got, and not because my screen went blank. It just for some reason it just didn't uh, didn't capture me the way I thought it would, which is too 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 bad. That's um, stupid. But that's not what I'm going to talk about this week. I'm going to talk about some games that I've been playing. Um, first off, uh, I I've been playing a, a little bit of Luigi's Mansion. I I don't know what it is about this game. I loved the first Mansion. And I just I, I I can't I can't make it that much further in the game. It just I, I get bored uh, for oh. some reason. So I, I think I just need to not touch it for about another week, and then start playing it again. And that'll be it because everybody I know is playing it, and they're all like, "Oh, this game is so good! I can't I can't I can't wait to get S class on every single level." And it's just like, "Oh, damn it! I I gotta I gotta get in here and do this with you people." Um, <laughs> so I, I'm gonna take a break from that game for a bit. Um, but I did I did pick up a new game and played a hell of a lot of it actually and beat it. Um, I did a, a a mini review of this game on the bonus stage last week uh, since we missed a Nintendo Pulse, but I thought I'd give a, a little mini review of uh, Lego City Undercover, The Chase Begins. Um, I picked it up on release day, digitally, downloaded it. Uh, it was 30 bucks, which was good, a good price, and um, proceeded to play the hell out of Lego City Undercover and, and really, really enjoyed it. Um, actually, that's a lie. I enjoyed it at the um, after I decided to do something a little bit differently. When I first started playing the game, it's like, oh, the Wii U version is so much better. Oh, in the Wii U version, you could do this. Oh, yeah. this never happened in the Wii U version. This is stupid. Um, and I was finding myself that I was actually not liking the game because there's so much that you could do in the Wii U version that the 3DS just doesn't have. And I, I decided to look at it as a 3DS game, not a Wii U title or not a sequel or prequel to a Wii U title, just uh, as its own little thing. And after I did that, I actually kind of dug it. it I, I didn't, I did not hate it. Um, so talk a little bit about it. Um, actually, before we talk a little bit about it, I've already reviewed the Wii version. So I, I thought I'd start with a couple things that this game doesn't do very well. Uh, first off, um, I guess the developers ran into some issues with 
the engine that they used. Um, the game is foggy. So, so foggy. Uh, have, did you play like Superman 64, Steven? No, or, but or, I've heard it was uh, pretty unbelievable. Yeah, or Turok, um, any of the Turok games on N64. And you know how you could see about one foot in front of you and then after that it's just like pea soup? Um, <laughs> that is like <laughs> this game. Kryptonite fog. Exactly. That, that is like this game. I, it's not, not that bad, obviously, but... Um, there is a lot of fog, like a, a city block away. You can't even see things anymore because they're all foggy. Um, I, I don't think the game was designed this way. I think this was put in as a holy crap. We have to ship this and we can't optimize the engine any further. Um, let's get it out the door. Um, because in, in the game, there's some stuff in this game that isn't like the Wii version. Um, there's these little uh, binocular things that are all over uh, in, in the different zones. And when you go up to them and, and hit A, um, you end up going to a, a little mini game where you have to move your 3DS all over the place um, to line up the perfect um, picture. And when you take a picture, it gives you a postcard. So there's this one thing where I'm taking a postcard picture. And I don't know what I'm taking a postcard picture of because it's like a, a shadow behind a murky, soupy mess. And I'm just like, OK, well, I'm just going to keep moving it until I line up the, the the target and the bar fills and it's doesn't it, and it just it gets happy. Um, and I did that. And it was actually like a picture of like a Mount Rushmore kind of thing, but with Lego figures in the thing. And it's like, wow, damned if I would have saw that because it just <laughs> looks like it looks like shadows to me. It looks like I'm taking a picture of ninjas because it's all just like dark dark forms that really have nothing to do with Mount Rushmore. So game definitely has some issues. Um, there's also load times. So on the Wii U, um, again, I'm I'm contrasting it to the Wii U, but um, just because I've already reviewed it on the Wii U, I thought I'd give some of the differences here. Um, in the Wii U, you could pretty much drive from one part of the world to another with no problems. And I don't mind load times. Actually, on the Wii U, getting into the game the first time, there's quite a load time because it's loading the whole world at once. It's not, I guess it's not streaming anything. In this game, obviously, the, the 3DS doesn't have as much memory as the Wii U. So whenever you go from one city section to another, it's actually um, going to be loading, loading it. And it's going to be loading it as you wait there and it, it's going to be loading it for about 30 seconds um so it's not um it's it's not that bad because there's only a couple of missions that have you driving from one area to another there's actually a mission about halfway through where you're actually going through three different sections so um just let's pretend that you turned the game on because you paused or, or you saved it just before you did that um so you turn the game on and then it's like, okay, you have to wait for the 30 or 40 seconds to load the game for the first time. Then you have to wait for a little bit more load to happen as you're sitting there and and then waiting for the first thing to, to get into. Then you're driving across the part of the city and then you get to an, a, a, another zone and it, it loads. And then you wait a little bit more and, and then you're in and you're driving to another part of the city and then it loads again. And then you finally get to the area where you're, you're finalizing the mission that you're on. So... I don't know. I could see where that would be really jarring to people. And when I saw that, I'm like, oh, crap. I, I hope that is not what, what this game is going to be about for the for the second half of the game. Um, thankfully, that was pretty much the only thing um, that uh, that or the only mission, I guess, in the game that really had that issue. So uh, after that was done, it was all pretty simple. Um the 3DS version of Lego City Undercover is very similar to the Wii U. It's an open world game with a lot of missions, a lot of collectibles, a lot of stuff to find. Um, I beat the game the first time, or, well, the only time, um, with 31% completion uh, because there's a lot of collectibles that you can find in, in all the different sections of the city. And it took me about eight hours to complete all the main missions. So it's a pretty beefy um pretty beefy game that um you, you can play for quite some time um and and there's like a whole pile of collectibles as well i i'm i've been trying to get all the collectibles in one zone and it's taken me a while um so i know that if i'm going through the rest of the city zones that it is going to take a while to get all of the all the cars all of the people all of the costume specific collectibles and things that you do um this game is a, a beefy uh, title um, for your thirty dollars on your three DS. Um, the the thing that kind of makes me scratch my head a little bit is this game. If it would have come out before the Wii U version, and if this was everybody's first um, taste of 
uh, Lego City Undercover. Um, I think the Wii version would have been just that much more of like a holy crap, Nintendo is awesome, this console is great. Um, but the fact that the Wii U version came out first and then the the, the lesser 3DS version came out, um, it, it just didn't really have that much of a fact. It's, it's like, okay, this is good for people that don't have a Wii U. But if you have a Wii U, unless you are really looking for a portable game to play or something for your kids, I know Jake Carguth, um, in the chat room says his kids uh his kids love the game um my kids love it as well um if, if you have a wii u and you can only buy one of them I, I would highly recommend the wii u version um if you need a 3ds game to play if, if you're bored of all your 3ds titles and, and you want to play a good lego game this is probably the best lego game that is on the 3ds and i've played i think all of the other ones that are on the 3ds except for maybe lord of the rings i don't think i played that one this is the best Lego game on the 3DS, uh, hands down. Um, but if you're looking for the best version of Lego City Undercover, this definitely isn't it. Uh, again, it's only $30, not not $50. Um, and you are going to get eight hours just to beat the main missions. You'll probably get another five to ten hours after that if you're going to hunt down um, everything else that's in the game. So I don't know. It, it's it's a great title. I'm glad I picked it up. It's I'm glad I downloaded it because I know it's something that I'm going to be able to go back to time and time again. Um, basically is kind of like a, a palette cleanser between other games get in there um hunt around find a couple more tokens for people or vehicles uh, and then go play something else um definitely glad i as i said that i downloaded it um uh in the chat room people are asking if, it, if there's any difference between download and um cartridge no i didn't think there would be i thought maybe they would do some sort of caching um since it was coming off an sd card maybe some of the stuff would be stored in memory not just loaded off the card doesn't seem to be that way um it, it seems like um some of the posts i've been reading online uh that everybody's load time seems to be exactly the same so um yeah lego city undercover the chase begins a decent title thirty dollars um Highly recommend it if you're looking for a Lego game on your 3DS. It, it is a fun title and uh, loads of fun to uh, to explore and, and play and, and and discover all the things. Um, it doesn't have any of the voice acting, really, um, that the Wii U version has. So a lot of the humor is lost. It does have some cutscenes that that are like videos. Um, speaking of videos, one thing I forgot is uh, one of the coolest things on the Wii U is when you build one of the superstructures, like a, a, a bridge or a ramp or... Uh, a big ferris wheel you're actually building it like your character builds it, and, and these things just appear in the world and it's like it's like this wow factor that you get when you when you build it um on the 3ds it actually cuts to a, a video and it shows a video of the stuff getting made and then there's like a five second load and then it appears in your game so some of the holy crap that was cool um is gone with uh with that limitation as well so Definitely, you could tell they ran into some develop, development limitations. Um, with that said, it's still a really great title, and I'm glad I picked it up. So, yeah, LEGO City Under Cover, The Chase Begins. Uh, check it out if you're looking for a LEGO game on your 3DS. Cool. little mini review thrown into my what's what, what I've been playing. That's uh, kind of kind of awesome. What do you say we get sure. into the rest of the show, though, man? Yeah, let's do it. <clears throat> All right, uh, kicking it off with... Something that is both cool and aggravating, and that is uh, Nintendo of UK is running a program. I, I guess we kind of got our own program here. Um, Nintendo yeah. of, of the US ran the thing by a 3DS Excel and either um, Luigi's Mansion or Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, and you get a free title. You could pick one of five titles that, that you could get, which was pretty cool, and I took advantage of that. I got Professor Layton, which I haven't even, st- I haven't even booted up yet saving that one for um a rainy day i guess um in the uk uh they have something uh, a little bit different so uh from now until june 30th if you're in the uk if you register three of eight titles so they have eight titles castlevania lords of shadow mirror of fate uh monster hunter 3 ultimate luigi's mansion 2 fire emblem awakening lego city undercover the chase begins pokemon mystery dungeon gate to infinity Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D, or Animal Crossing New Leaf. So if you register three of those eight games on your Club Nintendo account in the UK, you get to pick any other game of that list for free. So buy three, get one free. That is awesome. I wish Nintendo of US would do that because I could then get another game free because I own four of these eight games. And um, I guess that's why they're doing the UK. They want to sell a lot more stuff. Um, The UK is a very Sony... 
um, a pro Sony country and they, they Sony sells a lot of stuff out there. So I guess this is Nintendo trying to um, trying to sway some of the kids to play stuff on their portable, not not just on the Sony Vita. Ah, I guess that would be my guess, but I'm not a marketing guy and I don't work in Nintendo of, of, of Europe. So I don't know if that's indeed the case, but it, it, that sounds good. It sounds passable, Stephen. Sure. <laughs> That's convincing. Steven's not convinced. What is he saying? Anyway, um, <laughs> this this is uh, this, this is good news to people in the UK. Um, if you haven't already heard about it, go register them games um, on your Club Nintendo and get a free one. Um, I would pick Animal Crossing New Leaf, by the way, just in case you wanted my pick. That would be a good one. That so good go do that if you are in the UK. Uh, moving on, some bad news out of Nintendo. Um, Nintendo is not having an E3 press conference this year, Steven. They announced it... Um, well, they didn't really announce it. It was basically as kind of like a footnote um, when Nintendo was talking to people after their earnings call. It was in some slides and some stuff that they were basically um, talking to investors and other other things. So, yeah, Nintendo's not going to E3 for their big presentation. They're still going to be at E3 and they're still going to do other stuff around E3. But, you know, the, the big three presentations that happen right before E3 kicks off, you always have Xbox first because they're Xbox and they have the big Xbox money. Uh, and then you have Nintendo and then you have Sony on the same day. Now it's just going to be Nintendo or sorry, um, Microsoft and Sony. Uh, there's going to be a big, a big, a big gaping hole where the Nintendo presser used to be. I, I'm kind of sad about that, Stephen. Yeah, it's... Um... It's, I guess, kind of end of an era, but it really makes sense. It's um, like when Apple decided not to go to Macworld anymore. It's that, it's that kind of feeling. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's like, oh, well, I guess there's still Macworld, but I, I like the big press press conference that you would do. Um, yeah. N- Nintendo does say that um, that they're gonna have they're gonna have Nintendo directs around <laughs> around E3 because let's uh, let, let's talk to the big echo chamber of other Nintendo fans that are already so interested in Nintendo that they're listening to your Nintendo directs. Let's not advertise to people that may not know about the Wii U and other stuff Nintendo's doing. It just seems like a, a, a terrible idea right from right from the get go. I don't know. I, yeah, I again, mean, I, I assume that all the press outlets will cover the Nintendo Direct event as if it's part of e3 anyway well you're probably going to have all of the gaming outlets will cover it um but they would cover it anyway um the the good thing about e3 is all the press conferences you'd have them they'd be on g4 they'd be streamed on different websites you'd have like the new york times and other like major publications that maybe don't cover gaming very often would talk about all the big things it's like nintendo announced this big this big thingamajig and it does this and woohoo um but it the articles usually weren't that great, but at least it was the mainstream media was talking about gaming and talking about Nintendo. Now, will they cover the Nintendo Direct site? I don't think so. I think they'd, they'd probably be concerned with uh, the, the new Xbox Infinity and the PlayStation 4 and all the that other would probably be stuff. the case if, he, if Nintendo was doing the press conference as well, because what are they really showing? I mean, yeah. They're showing a handful of games. <clears throat> I guess so. Names, I guess so. But if they... If, systems. Yeah, but if they drop a megaton where it's like, yeah, Smash Brothers coming next month and the month after is Mario 64 um, redone in 3D visuals on your 3DS. Oh, wait, we already did that. Okay, well, let's do something. Let's do Mario Galaxy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what we want to do. And here's a vitality sensor, but we're not going to bring that out. Like they could they could pull out some weird, crazy stuff again and it, it might do good. Um, they could they could re-release a bunch of games so they could announce a bunch of stuff and they would get a lot of press even with the other console announcements but this really seems like a move where it's like wow well they're going to announce big stuff and we have this little console that we can't sell right now let's just not even do it let's put our hand, heads in the sand and, and forget this e3 thing is even happening mm-hmm. i don't know to me that's what it seems like it just seems uh, kind of kind of back ass words if you're if you're going to be trying to sell this product that is having problems being sold you think you'd want to talk about it as much as possible and I don't know, maybe Nintendo can't afford to do the big E3 presentation anymore. Maybe with the financial reports and losing money and stuff, maybe they're, they're, trying, to, they're trying to cut back on expenditures company-wide. And maybe this is just a, a couple, couple 10 million or so of money that they don't have to spend. Maybe it's something as simple as that, but I don't know. I, I think it's a really dumb idea, so we'll see how it plays out at, at, at E3. All right, moving on. Um, Steven, you put this one in the notes. Something about Satoru Iwata saying Pikmin is being delayed 
not because the game is not um, is having issues, the development is difficult, none of that stuff. Just that it's short staff. Yeah, they um, they didn't have a. He said they didn't have a big enough team working on the game and on other games, so they had to pull developers from other games and put them onto Pikmin <laughs> Three because they felt it was better to delay Pikmin Three and put lots of finishing touches on it and make it a really, really, really good game. Um, so that people would not be disappointed with it when it came out. They wanted to put a lot of finishing touches on it. And it makes me wonder about it because I know that when Pikmin 3 was first shown, everyone was like, well, yeah, you know, it looks okay, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't look that much better than it did on GameCube. And um, that was pretty damning right there because you're talking about what's supposed to be two generations of change. Sure, sure. And um, if they went in there and worked on the assets and... Put in more polys and more complex textures and bigger areas or whatever, and more bloom effects, whatever. Well, since it's a glorified Wii game that has been uh, ported to the Wii U, maybe they're taking out all the old Wii textures and Mm. and low poly, um, as you said, characters and and making it something that is really going to look awesome on the Wii U. So I can get behind that. That's pretty cool. Um, my, My other comment is Nintendo, you know, you can hire people. And, and then you won't have to take people off of other projects. You can just hire some more people, you know? Yeah. People are cheap um, in comparison to not shipping a game that's been in development for three years. You know, you see, a lot of other developers will do that. Developers and publishers will do that. They, When they are developing a big game, they will beef up their team with like dozens or even hundreds of additional people who are only there for the duration of the development of the game. Mm-hmm. And then they let them go again at the end. You know, these are like contractors. Yep. Um, but it seems like Nintendo doesn't do that because you never hear about Nintendo firing no. hundreds of people or whatever. It's always like, you know, okay, this game is late. No, I think, I think Nintendo is a little too secretive for that. They, they wouldn't yeah. really want to, uh, allow people to look, um, behind the curtain at, uh, at the man behind the curtain in Nintendo land and then leave and go work somewhere else. I think they're a little yeah. bit too secretive. Um, or they, they could work with other development companies. I mean, they had retro, they had other things uh, way back in the day. I mean, there's other sure. ways around that. Um, it just, it, it makes me sad because it seems like the Wii U is going to be another console that you're only going to be playing Nintendo titles on um, yeah. if, if the way it's going now continues. And the fact that now Nintendo titles might be delayed, that you aren't going to even be able to play Nintendo titles that often um, kind of makes me really sad. So hopefully they can, they can fix it up and, and get some of these games launched. Um, there's, there's lots of fun to be had on this new system and no one's going to know that if they don't start shipping games and c- encouraging people to buy the console. Which we'll get to shortly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, also coming out uh, last week, we didn't get a chance to mention it. So we thought we'd mention it now. Uh, a big, the big patch came out. The spring speed up, uh, spring cleaning patch came to the Wii U, uh, which added a lot of stuff. Uh, there are a whole pile of new features. There, uh, the ability for downloads to happen in the background. To test that out, I downloaded the Rayman Legends Wii U Challenge app, and then I stopped the download, or or I basically turned my system off, mm-hmm. and then I turned it on again the next day, and sure enough, it was installed and sitting there yeah. waiting for me to play. That's really cool. Um, I did the same thing because previously you'd have to you'd have to download a game and it would take forever and then you'd have to install the game and that would take just as long <laughs> as the download to install it. Now all that can happen in the background, which is which is pretty damn cool. Um, what other what else? Uh, the speed up, of course, every everything yeah. is a, a lot uh, quicker, which is really good. Um, you can copy stuff from one USB storage device to another, which is uh, which is really good as well. Um, and another big one is the option to adjust screen size, yeah, which you could never at a system level. Yeah, you couldn't do it before. You could do it in Miiverse, so Miiverse would look awesome, but everything else would be like skewed. Which Miiverse, was... the eShop, and the um, web browser. Yeah, and I think one other place had had it to do. Uh, and, which is just yeah, those three so places. weird. And 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 so yeah, my home screen would be all off because I'm going through an HDMI uh, switch. So the overscan isn't detected properly, so it's pushed to the outside. So a lot of the screen would be cut off, um, and I could adjust it in those areas, but I couldn't on the main like the the, the main like wire wire plaza. It it would be cut off, and some of the icons would be cut off. Now I just scaled it down, and everything looks great. 
So thanks, Nintendo. That was a nice little feature that uh, that you finally added, which is a, a really good thing. Yeah, that um, was nice. Yeah, and, and what else? There's a lot of other things. There's um, undo and redo buttons in your Miiverse posts. Um, they they silently launched Miiverse on the PC, so you can log into your Miiverse account and read all that fun stuff on your web browser. So, yeah, this patch was actually a pretty decent one. Um, very yeah. un-Nintendo-like patch. This is more like a PlayStation patch. that Or added- like a uh, maybe a 3DS patch yeah what do you think does it sound like something that might come from the team that handled the software for the 3ds <laughs> you would think so um yeah it's it's kind of kind of almost like they amalgamated all these people under one roof so they could work together and and do similar things across the different platforms yeah <laughs> um there's some rumors out there that uh, a coming 3d patch this year a 3ds patch this year will basically basically put meverse right on your 3ds so you, it'll be yeah. similar to the wii and some other stuff um, as well, which would be really cool. Um, there's also a lot of talk about uh, uh, your Club Nintendo account becoming your account, your Nintendo account, um, which will then be the same across all the different platforms. Seems like there's a lot of there, there's a lot of effort um, in Nintendo's headquarters to really make the the Wii U and the 3DS kind of perform together, similar to the Vita and the the PS3, which is really cool, or the Vita and the PS4, which will be coming out. Um, yeah. If that actually comes out, Stephen, I'm going to be super stoked because I I love both of those platforms, and it would be nice if I'd be able to browse the store and buy a 3DS game when I'm on my Wii U and just have it like magically just shoot down to my 3ds that would be super sweet yeah nintendo seems to be going all out especially with that digital stuff you know anything <laughs> eShop related they seem to be all over that and it's mm-hmm. got to be you know it's just buckets of profit for them you know they just put they put a digital file on there they set up the drm they hit go and people come in and just dump their money and take the take the zeros and ones and nintendo probably still doesn't understand why people are okay with it but <laughs> is happy to take the money <laughs> it's some some like magic box they 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 keep making the box a little bigger and money just flows out of, of the thing yeah. it's like holy crap okay we gotta keep making this box bigger because people are putting money through it yeah um yeah another neat feature they added was that you can hold the b button down while the system is while the wii u is starting up and it'll go straight right. to the wii menu um I, I guess this is Nintendo acknowledging that the only good games on Wii U are Wii games. <laughs> yes, zing, indeed. That is uh, that is true. Um, and, and all this talk about um, the update it, it kind of made people forget that the Virtual Console um, launched as well. Oh, wait, no, the pricing made people forget about the launch of Virtual Console on the Wii U, so uh, that's why no one's talking about it. Um, Virtual Console launched on the Wii U, and games are way too expensive. Um, and to, there aren't enough of them. Yeah, there's eight games that launched on the Wii U. One of them being Super Mario World on the Super Nintendo, which I purchased on my Wii, but I purchased on Wii number one, which died. And now if I want to get Super Mario World on my, my, my Wii U, it's going to cost me $8. I'm not doing that, Steven. Yeah, I, I'd rather well, play I had on, it on my Wii, on my virtual Wii, so it only cost me a buck fifty. Well, there you go. I wish I could have moved it over to my. I would have. I would have paid a dollar fifty to play it on the on the Wii U gamepad. Eight dollars, no, thank you. Um, I'd rather just play it on an emulator on my PC since I've already. You got to call Nintendo. You said you had that on one of your Wiis, right? Yeah, I have it on call one of my Wiis. Nintendo. I got to do that. But even I, if you have to mail in all your old Wii's and have them credit those to your account, at least it's something. Yeah, they seem to be so. really good about this. I mean, they have to do it all manually and it's a pain in the neck and you have to get on the phone to do it, but it's hmm. all possible. They have the switches. It's just easier to sit here and bitch about it, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> and and for a time it made for um entertainment as well. Yeah. That's and true. That's true. For a time. For a time, and small time. It's not entertaining anymore. <laughs> Just call Nintendo and get it fixed, Lloyd. Come on, man. Yeah, I gotta do that. I gotta do that one of these days. But yeah, the yeah. virtual console is very kind of metastic right now. Um, Balloon Fight, it Donkey is. Kong Junior, games or something, right? Yeah, yeah. Donkey Kong Junior on the on the NES, Excite Bike, F Zero, Ice Climber, Kirby's Adventure, Punch Out, and Super Mario World. Yeah, like four of those are the ones that were thirty cents. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, it's um yeah kind of a a meh kind of things yeah where's urban champion damn it 
<laughs> Where's anything that I would rather buy for like an eight dollars? Like, do you think the pricing's good? Like five dollars for NES and eight dollars for for Super Nintendo? I think that's a little. Well, too I'm much. torn on it. It seems it seems really high to me, but I think that our perception of it being too high largely comes from the fact that since the mid '90s, we've been stealing those games. Um, uh, I don't even think that's it. I mean, I. No? For me, I I'm happy to pay. I I mean I I played emulators a lot, um, mm-hmm. but I also own most of the games that I played on emulators. I just didn't want to hook up my Super Nintendo or my NES um, to a television. I'd rather just play on my computer. Yeah. Um, like I, I I guess where I'm getting or where I'm coming from is when I look at games that I'm playing on my iPad or downloadable titles that I'm downloading on my Vita or my PlayStation Three. Like yeah. I can get a really good game for eight dollars. That isn't something that is just a repackaged game that came out on a, a console like three generations ago. But is it Super Mario World? No, but I <laughs> but I played Super Mario World. It's not a yeah. new it's yeah. not a new game. It's an old experience, which I still appreciate. Sure. I'm a big retro game fan. Yeah. But I, I think I might just wait for my retron to get a retron and then just plug my cartridge into it and then yeah. play the original cartridge. It, it would be better than buying all these games for $8, which I already own on cartridge, which I already own on like the DS ports, which I already own on the 3DS ports, which I already own on like this the the Wii. Like there's like yeah. so many of these games I have like five different versions of. Um, you don't want to know how many times I've bought Castlevania. Well, yeah, that's a little different, but... <laughs> yes, but yes, you, you you should be free to play any Castlevania game on an emulator without feeling guilty, Stephen. Oh yeah, <laughs> trust me, I do. But um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just I I don't I don't get it. Like five dollars for NES. Like if they really want, I, I guess I guess this is the Wii. The the Wii, all the NES games were five dollars, and all the Super Nintendo games were eight, like five hundred yeah. points and eight hundred points. Now that they're dollar, um like they they used to be like those points and 100 points was a dollar so it was it wasn't hard to figure out the math but it just seemed less expensive when you're thinking of Wii points like oh it's only 500 points sure yeah yeah (laughs) now it's like 4.99 you're freaking crazy what are you doing um yeah well back then you also didn't have things like the iphone and and exactly exactly and that's another thing like i just bought lego uh, lego batman uh dc universe on my ipad for five dollars I and that's I for the same price I could get Ice Climber or yep. Balloon Fight. Actually, no, I paid thirty cents for Balloon Fight, so I guess Donkey Kong Jr. Yeah. would be the other one. Sure. Um, like for me personally, like five dollars for a Super Nintendo, sure. Four to five dollars would be good. Two dollars for an NES, sure. I'd rebuy those games again. Um, yeah. I just yeah. don't want to be shafted again. I don't want to lose like my access to these games, even though my that's Club what Nintendo really account. tears it for me. The fact that. I, I spent uh I, I wish I knew exactly how much I spent on virtual console and we wear games because mm-hmm. it was a lot of well, money. At one point with um I, I created the um what was it? Uh, virtual console was it we we V C D B website I was gonna do reviews mm-hmm. on every single yeah, Wii that. virtual console title and I did like forty and it was just like, okay, this is stupid. I'm spending so much money on virtual console titles, which I've already played. Um, there's so, 400 now. There's 400 titles on the Wii Virtual Console, oh, and there's eight on the Wii U. Yeah, it's 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 insane. Anyway, and if you want them, you have to buy them again. <clears throat> yeah. Even if you already own them, you have to buy them again. Yeah, the, it's, Nintendo's got to figure this out. Um, there has to be like the Sony way of doing things. Um, the like you, you buy something it's on your account you sign into your account on a new system you can move your account over from that old system to the new system everything works um, they gotta stop worrying about kids that are going to be trading consoles back and forth or other stuff which is gonna at the end of the day not even come close to equaling the amount of piracy that's happening with people playing old roms and stuff right. stuff like that um, like any money is better than no money when when it comes to old games right um they gotta they gotta really figure out a better way to do this because um i'm nintendo's biggest fan and i love retro games and i don't even want to buy these again even though i love them and i would love for my kids to play them on the the wii virtual console gamepad i I, i'm not going to spend my eight dollars to do that now there's talk of a subscription plan um i saw this uh yesterday somewhere i wish i had a link but uh 
I guess we can look for it and see if we can put it in the notes. Hmm. Nintendo is considering doing a free to a free to play with a subscription plan Stop model moving your mic. for their. You're moving your mic oh, again. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> a subscription plan for their uh, for their system. For I would do that. I would, yeah. I would do that. I, I'd play. I'd pay Netflix for my. I'd pay a ten dollars a month plan to play mm-hmm. these old games. That would be awesome. Yeah, I think I'd. I might go as high as twenty twenty five dollars a month to have complete unlimited access to the virtual console. Everything hmm. on the virtual console. Hmm. Yeah, I, I. I don't know exactly how much I would spend, but it would be money. Um, yeah. it, more money than what Nintendo will get for me now. So. Oh um, yeah. Any anything yeah. to do with this would be would be good. That's very, very cool. Um, speaking of money, uh, Nintendo's losing lots of it. Um, they um, they had their financial results uh, earlier this, m- or I guess late last month, uh, since it's now, it's now May, and they they didn't they didn't do so good. Um, they um, they their net profit was seven billion yen, um, which is um, seventy one million dollars, um, but they lost they lost 365 million dollars so the quarter they made money but for the year as a whole they lost money so right. that's not good um they've had two cons two different uh, console releases um a handheld and a console that have made them lose lots of money uh the 3ds was pretty much dead in the water they had to make some really crazy steps that was drop the price $80 give away a bunch of games to people that paid full price um that kind of kind of corrected the course of that ship um the 3ds is a great console system now or a great handheld system but it's a it's a great thing to own yeah. uh, as a gamer yeah. now the wii u um they first said that it was going to sell 8 million units and then moved that that number back to five million and it looks like they've only sold like three and a half million um so they're not even meeting their internal estimates even though they've rolled back their internal estimates so they really need to start focusing on that and figuring out how they're going to get people to buy the wii u um otherwise they're going to keep losing money because if you're not selling consoles and selling games to put on the console you're not going to make money as a console manufacturer i don't know yeah, it's uh, it's it's hard to kind of predict where this is going to go and what's going to happen. But um, I mean, it's nice to see them profitable again. But it's you know, you kind of want them to. I want them to accomplish something and and come out of this with the Wii U the way they did with the 3DS. Um, mm-hmm. Totally, and I guess the only good thing to say is that they they lost less. Um, the last financial year they lost 530 million and the or sorry two years ago i guess 530 million and last year they lost 365 million so that's that's like 150 million less that they lost and 160 million so or a little bit more but whatever you you get what i'm saying it's they 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 lost less that's a good thing but they're still losing money they have to figure a way to stop that loss and stop hemorrhaging um all all the yen that's flowing out of their Scrooge McDuck sized money pit that they swim around in. It's uh, yeah. sprung a couple leaks. They got to, they got to plug those holes. Yep, definitely. And see what will happen. So hopefully E3 is big, even though they're not having a press conference. So is it really going to be big? I don't know. And, and I'm hoping that, um, I'm hoping that Pikmin three is this <laughs> unbelievable game because at this, I don't have a pre-order in on it at this point. I have no interest in no. buying it. And, and they're hoping that they can put this out as a, as a console seller, um, I, I think Pikmin, I don't think that brand has that kind no. of power. I don't think anybody knows what Pikmin is. That isn't already a Nintendo fan. Yeah, like you're not gonna you're not gonna go to a mom and pop in a mall and show them a Pikmin poster and they're like, "Oh my god, I love it! My kids will love it!" Yeah. It just it's not a title that is like a hardcore Nintendo or it is it's a hardcore fan. It's not boy. a Mario. It's not a Zelda. Exactly. It's not even a Metroid. And Metroid is so de- is so. Is deprecated the word now? I mean, is that a fair word for Metroid? I guess so. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of fallen. It's 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 got a little bit of tarnish. Um, it, it needs to be buffed a little bit before it'll start selling like it uh, like it yeah. used to. Um, do you know what will actually help Nintendo, Stephen? I figured it out. If only Nintendo would send a message to every single Wii 
with that little blue flashy flashy light on the front of your Wii that says, hey, it's time to discover Wii U, that will solve all their problems, Stephen. I don't know if it'd solve all their problems, but it certainly would be a nice step. Well, they just did that. They sent a message out to every registered Wii uh, <laughs> that has the messages enabled advertising the Wii U. So yeah. they, they, they're that scared that people don't know what the Wii U is. So they're sending notices out to every Wii owner that's like, hey, pick up this new system. It's yeah, not, it's just, not a, just an upgrade. It, it's not quote. just a peripheral. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a controller. Yeah. This is a whole system. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's... That kind uh, of tone. It's oh, it's so bad. I I hate it because it's like it's like watching a train crash in slow motion. Like y- you don't want to see it hit, but you kind of just can't look away because you're you're oddly like I don't know intrigued by the whole like big fireball that's about to happen. I mean that's how I feel about Nintendo right now. Like they're they're, they're heading down a really dark path, and they don't seem to be able to s- like put the brakes on or steer out of the way. I I really hope they do something good at E three. I I really really hope. Really, really yeah, helped for the best. All right. Well, maybe this will help. Um, there was a game that launched as um, I think it came out like the, the week after the Wii U launch. It wasn't quite a launch title, I don't believe. It was shortly after. It was called Tank 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 uh, with lots of exclamation marks. You're welcome. Um, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's uh, it, it's basically I, I believe it's a Namco game and it's a port of an arcade title that has. Um, it's one of those big, big arcade titles that um, it, it basically has two pods set up and it takes a picture and it puts your picture on the tank and you drive around and, and kill each other or whatever. Um, I was really intrigued about that. I, I read a lot of articles about the game after this was announced because I didn't know what it was about. And I'd love to have um, to have one of those arcade machines nearby. Um, but I thought, hey, this would be fun to play with my kids. And then I found out that it came out as a $60 title. So it was essentially an arcade game that you'd be putting a couple dollars in to play. Or you could pay $60 and play the pretty much exact same game. Uh, it seemed way too overpriced for, for yeah. my liking. Um, and I think they fixed that. Um, they released the base um, game of Tank 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 for free. So you can go to the eShop right now and download Tank Tank Tank. Uh, you get a couple modes. You get a, a couple different things to play through. And if you want more you can buy it piecemeal. So the true freemium thing, like buy as you go, pay as you go. If you want more stages, you can buy more stages for $1.99 each. If you want different gameplay modes, you can buy those for five bucks or whatever. Um, seems like a really smart thing to do with this title. Um, I, I'm I, I'm going to be picking it up. I haven't downloaded it yet. I'm going to start the download right when we d- finish this show and start playing this game with my kids because I, I really think they would really enjoy that. The kind of uh, death match with with fun tanks and shooting things. So, um, yeah, um, check it out. Tank, 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 freemium, free download. You can play some of the game for nothing and then buy it piecemeal. And I, I wonder if all the stuff added together actually equals more than the $60 disc price. It, it, I, it makes you really curious if they're that evil to get people to spend more than, um, $60 dollars or whatever the the full retail price is now but anyway if you just want a couple deathmatch um, maps and stuff like that this might be the way to go so do check do check it out free on the app store or free on the eShop. i keep calling it the app store sorry i just did the ios pulse podcast or the uh, <laughs> uh touch of gaming and uh yeah i keep saying app store my apologize all right um some other sadness even though we got a little bit of happiness um madden uh, football, one of the biggest selling games every year. Um, Nintendo, or sorry, Madden has been uh, released on a Nintendo platform since 1991, Stephen. They have never missed a year, so it was on everything, all the way up to the Wii. Um, they will not be releasing Madden on the Wii U. I mean, it was a crappy afterthought on the Wii. But it was. It, was, uh, it existed. It, it, exactly. It was out there. So if you wanted Madden... You could do it. Um, you could do it on the Wii or you could do it on the 3DS. But mm-hmm. um, this year, uh, EA statement is, we will not be releasing a Wii U version of Madden NFL in 2013. However, we have a strong partnership with Nintendo and continue to evaluate evaluate opportunities for delivering additional Madden NFL products for Nintendo fans in the future. Which is, you suck. We're not, we don't like you anymore, but we'll still keep your number in our phone. So maybe we can drunk dial you. 
at some point <laughs> in the future. It's it's basically if you start selling enough consoles where we could possibly <clears throat> possibly make the money back manufacturing yeah. a Madden title for Wii U, then we will manufacture a Madden title for Wii U. And it, it makes sense. If there's three and a half million consoles out there, mm-hmm. and, and how many how many people with a Nintendo console actually buy Madden? You know the last time I bought Madden, do you want to know what, <laughs> what, what year there was? No, actually, let me amend that. The last Madden that I owned. Okay. I didn't even buy it myself. Okay. Madden 94, and it was on Sega Genesis. Wow. There you go. Well, you, you're not a big football game fan, I guess. Video no. game. But there are people... Oh, I loved Madden 94. I played it like crazy. <laughs> the, but the, honestly, it's this, it's been the same game since then. Just better graphics. Well, that's exactly. And and better. I mean, it's a better game. It's a better game. But um, the, the funny thing is, up to... Uh, I think it was like three years ago, the, the top-selling Madden was the PlayStation 2 version. Even though the PS3 was out, it was just the people bought the PS2, and that was yeah. their Madden box. And that was all they played. Every year, they'd get the new Madden, and they put it in the Madden box, and they'd play the Madden on the TV with the Madden stick. And yeah. that was it. And it came out on the Wii. It came out on a whole bunch of different consoles. But... Since 1991, Madden has been on a Nintendo platform, and this is like 20 plus years of Madden, and the Wii U killed that. Like that has got to say something, Nintendo. They 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 should be having problems keeping stuff in their body right now. It should be shooting out of every single end, and they should be trying to scramble and figure out a way to fix this because one of the biggest franchises out there, which has always been on a Nintendo platform will not be on a Nintendo platform this year. And that's that's got to say something. If nothing else... It is a big deal. It's a huge brand. It's like Call of Duty. To, Call of Duty these yeah. days. I, I'd be yeah. surprised. Like, what if the next Call of Duty doesn't come on the Wii U? I mean, it's already been leaked that there, the logo's on... On, on the on the website, the, the teaser site for it. But what if that logo goes away and it actually doesn't come out on the Wii U? Like this is this is sad. This is really kind of sad. Um there was a couple rumors that came out today that I was reading that it looks like Tiger Woods has been cancelled as well and will not be coming on the Wii U. Which is funny because the renaissance for Tiger Woods was the Wii game that had one to one control and it was like Look, Tiger Woods can be cool again, and it it all of a sudden got popular again, and everybody loved it. And now it's not coming on the Wii U. It's sad, man. I, I every time it's like I'm talking at a at a at a funeral. I'm giving a eulogy to a system here, and this yeah. really makes me sad. I love Nintendo. This can't happen. People yeah. have to figure this out. Yeah, I mean, it's I I recognize the importance of these franchises to other people, mm-hmm. but. These games, none of these games matter to me. These are not the games that I want on the platform that'll make me happy to own it. Totally. But I already own the platform. Yeah. So. And I, I think what it is, is these are the types of franchises that people look for when they buy their next console. It's like, okay, well, I want a new console so I can play a racing game or a platformer, but I need to be able to play my next my next Madden. I need to get be able to to yep. to, to, to golf a little bit with Tiger or play the next NHL game. Um whatever whatever game you love whatever sport you love it's popular um it, it's like the hardcore kind of gaming public maybe that's not your kind of title but it, it is a popular franchise i haven't bought a sports game in forever i mean i buy nhl hockey maybe every two or three years just to have something newer to play um that's about it i i haven't bought madden forever i bought tiger woods on the wii just because it was awesome with the one-to-one control that was great until yeah. i until my shoulders were super sore from playing it for too long and then i <laughs> didn't play it so much anymore like it, yeah. it was just yeah i i mean this this is a huge this is like this is like the start of death rattles for the console uh i yeah. i really hope nintendo can can solve this i su- i'm surprised they don't at least you know put out like an eShop release of the game you know what yeah. i mean i, I just bypass the whole manufacturing costs and stuff like that. Yeah. Considering they're already making the game for other platforms, why not just you know poop out a uh, an eShop <clears throat> version of the game and let people download it and play it with almost no cost and all profit? It, mm-hmm. I think they'd probably sell quite a number of copies enough to make back the you know. I mean, since the development's already done for other platforms, right? I mean, yeah, everyone claims the Wii U is easy to <clears throat> port to. I guess so. I, I think the only problem with this is the um, the people that would be buying the Madden, a, a lot of them would be kind of the Walmart crowd that maybe live mm-hmm. in, in urban centers that don't have um, 
high availability of broadband internet or even maybe don't have broadband internet because of the cost. Um, a lot of those people are the ones that buy like the NASCAR games or the Madden games or whatever. Not, I'm not trying to stereotype. It's just that's when you look at sales, most of them come from for, for Madden. They come from Walmart. Um, and maybe they, they looked at, OK, well, the demographic of this store and the demographic of high speed Internet, maybe they don't meet anywhere. And they're thinking, OK, well, maybe we'll only sell like 10,000 copies or 5,000 copies if we do digitally instead of like the, the 40 or 50,000 copies we'd sell. Um, if we did a disc and so maybe it just, yeah. it didn't, the, the spreadsheet columns didn't line up for whatever reason. Sure. It has to be something like that, but yeah, it just, it's super, super sad. Anyway, let's get into some, some better news kind of maybe, um, a Facebook, uh, page has uh, started up. It's facebook.com slash Nino Cooney 3ds Wii U. I'll post a link in the show notes. And this is a community that's getting together to try to convince, um, the powers that be, that we, owners of Nintendo consoles and handhelds, want uh, Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch, to come to the 3DS, which already exists. It exists in Japan. It's it's out there on the DS. So up-res it and translate it and bring it over to the US. You don't even have to translate it because a translation was done for the PlayStation 3 version. You just have to port that translation from one um, one platform to another. and then I thought that was a different game. Uh, I don't think the same series. I think it was, I think it's the same one actually. Well, maybe I I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but it it already exists. A a version of Nino Kuni exists on the DS in Japan. People want it here on in North America on the 3DS and the Wii U. So there is a fan page that started, um, when the developers said, yeah, uh, it's not that we don't want to bring it. Um, it's just that we haven't made that decision yet. So this, this page started out as, um, a way to convince them. So if you, if you people listening right now would like to have Nino Cooney on your 3DS or Wii U, come to this Facebook page, like it and, and post your thoughts. Um, let people know that, yeah, I would buy it. I would buy if it came to my console of choice and maybe, uh, this will convince the powers that be to make it, um, as it stands, uh, there's 2,000 likes. When I liked it um, earlier today, or was it yesterday, it had 1,800 likes. So it's growing not very fast. It's not the 100,000 people liking it that that would really kind of raise some eyebrows. So this may be just an exercise in futility, but um, it, it makes me hopeful. I mean, some of the other fan page kind of stuff worked on other games. So who knows? Maybe this one will work for us. Yeah, it'd be interesting to uh, to have a 3DS or Wii U version of this game. I mean, I, I haven't picked up the PS3 version yet. I've been waiting for the price to drop because I, you know, I have too much else to play. Um, but yeah, I mean, it would be it'd be good. It would be interesting to yeah. to have it on uh, on a Nintendo platform. I mean, I've heard, I've heard a lot of people tell me that's a very Nintendo e kind of a game oh totally i mean it looks like it like when i first started playing it it's like holy crap how is this not on a nintendo platform uh it just it's so happy and and saccharine (laughs) it's just like so it just so nintendo it just it has a look of nintendo about it um i'm looking here uh on wikipedia and nino kuni wrath of the white witch came out i'm looking at that too (laughs) came out on the ds a year before it came out on the playstation 3 so it came out on the DS first on in, in 2010 in Japan, and then it came out on the PlayStation 3 in Japan in 2011. So, yeah, it's the, they have different titles though. It's hmm. S- Second Country: The Jet Black Mage is the DS version, and Second Country: The Queen of White Sacred Ash is the PS3 version. Hmm. And it's not clear on here whether they're the same game. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, a, a version exists uh, on a DS, so at, at the very least, maybe they can bring this one over to the 3DS in, in the US, and then the PlayStation 3 version can be ported to the Wii U, because the power is there. They are pretty much the exact same in, in processing power, at least, um, and, and graphic power, so it should be, should be doable. Anyway, hopefully this happens, because uh, I'd love to play Nino Kuni on, on it would, it'd be great to have it on my gamepad. And I'd be able to like lay in bed and play Nino Kuni. That would be really awesome. So it also says here that there are two mobile games in the series as well. So there's actually four Nino Kuni games altogether. Wow. I, I want all of them. 
I, yeah. I do want all of them. And I don't want to have to learn Japan to play them. So come on, Namco <laughs> Bandai. Let's get these moved over. Um, speaking of translation and, and games from Japan, um, the... The group that did the fan translation for Mother 3, uh, um, when the Earthbound announcement made its uh, made its its way after the the Nintendo Direct that uh, that that Earthbound was coming to Virtual Console, the fan group um, for Mother 3, which basically came um, they came out with a, a version of the Game Boy Advance ROM, or I guess they came out with the translation files that you could patch yourself because releasing the ROM would have probably got them in all sorts of legal trouble. They said, um, this is a quote from Mandolin, uh, it says, I realize that localizing a game this size can cost a lot, so if it will help even in the slightest, I'll gladly offer to let Nintendo use my text translation files for any use at all, completely for free. I'll even edit the files to fit whatever new standards are necessary, content, for, content formatting, memory size, etc., completely for free. I'll even retranslate everything from scratch if need be. Just whatever it takes to get an official release out. So the fan group that made this a reality so you could play Mother 3 in English is now saying, Nintendo, release Mother 3. We'll give you all the stuff to do it. It will cost you next to nothing. Yep. All, all the work has already been done. I thought that was really awesome. Um, I, I, it, it's surprising. It's um, not... It's not surprising that the community would be willing to give this away or that they made the offer. What's surprising to me is that they would even bother to try <laughs> to convince Nintendo to listen to them. Yeah. Maybe it's a new Nintendo, Steven. Maybe they maybe they're turning over a leaf when they lose uh when they lose almost a billion dollars in two years. Maybe uh maybe things have changed in Nintendo Land. You think maybe they're actually starting to listen to what people are saying that they want instead of just well, presuming to Yeah. Um, Nintendo knows the internet exists now. They didn't know that a few years ago, so Yeah. Things... They were all down on DLC yeah. not two years ago and now here they are now doing there's... everything DLC. Yeah. Fire Emblem sold how how many DLC packs and it's like, we'll never do that. Too and many. now it's they're doing it a lot. So mm-hmm. yeah, it could it could could happen. Could could happen. Stranger things have happened, but yeah. uh, I won't. There's hold my probably breath. some legal issue in the way, making it impossible for them to take that translation without paying something for it. Yeah, but um, you know, I, I can't see it being cost ineffective for them to give them some amount of money for it, and then yeah, here's a half of a half of a half of a percentage points. Donated to Child's Play or something, <laughs> no, or, or maybe they make some, they make some legal comment. Oh, you know, this is a slippery slope issue, and if we start giving money to groups of people who are, you know, hacking and translating our games, then there'll be people hacking and translating our games all the time, and that show, that sends a message that Nintendo endorses the hacking and translation of our games. Stop thinking like a lawyer, Stephen. Come on. I don't know. I just I'm so used to hearing these legal arguments against fun. Yeah. That. Um, yeah. N- not. I, just, I can actually formulate them on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe something like that would happen. Um, it, it's still a great idea, and it's it's great PR for the group. Um, that uh, yeah. that did the translation at, at the very least. Um, at least it tells people that if you want to play Mother Three in English, uh, if you have an emulator, or if you have a way to play a ROM on a on a physical device, um, you can you can do it. It's not legal, but it's there. And if Nintendo wants to make the monies, they got to make it a legal way for for you to go and do that. Yeah, and and they have a they already have a completed. They supposedly at least had at one point a complete translation of of the original Mother game. Yep. Um, yep. They just didn't bother to release it because of when they were in the product cycle for the NES. But yeah, exactly. They could just put them all together as a bundle and sell it for ten bucks on the eShop on the Wii U, and and it would sell many, many copies. You think so? Yeah, I think it would. I think there's enough people that love um, love those types of games that would just love to to play them as a as like a complete package um it's yeah. obviously it's not the not the madden crew wouldn't be coming to play it but i, I think there's enough hardcore. but they're not on this platform anyway because it's, there's no madden on Wii. exactly so you've you've gotten that whole idea that you've kind of thrown it away it's not even a possibility anymore sure but, but they yeah. solved that problem. that was this is nintendo solving <laughs> problems 
by keeping yeah. Madden from coming to For the platform. people that don't like Nintendo games, you can't mm-hmm. come on our console because only Nintendo games will come on our console. This They're is like going, going elitist. Exactly. <laughs> this is going back to the days of single use consoles that you would buy. So you'd buy like the uh, you'd buy the Pong console and plug it into yeah. your television. The Wii yeah. U is Nintendo's new Nintendo console. Yeah. Only Nintendo games will be available on the Nintendo console. And that's it. Hasn't it kind of been that way since the N64, though? It kind of has. Kind of has, yeah. sadly enough. Um, all right. Let's talk about some some other stuff. Uh, there's a Fire Emblem Del- DLC that came out this week. Um, or is coming out next week. I think it came out this week. Um, it's called the Summer Scramble Pack. I haven't kept up on the Fire Emblem DLC because there's just too much coming out. And I stopped playing Fire Emblem because I was just too much. Um, and the Summer Scramble Pack, um, it, there's a beach map where uh, you could go and battle on a beach. Um, but there's apparently one square that you could stand on. And when you do, it shows a bunch of screenshots of the main characters in bikinis and swimsuits because you're on a beach and you're partying on a beach. Well, there's uh, a, a character um, who has been censored because in the Japanese version, there's a shot of her and you could see her bikini butt. And in the U.S. version, um, they've changed it. And there's like, it looks like there's a cape that's blocking her butt, which actually makes it look less, look, look worse, actually, because it looks like there could be nothing there. So it's actually even more racy than what it could have been before, because it's just a, it's a small little drawing of, of someone in a bikini. Really bizarre, like for Nintendo to go ahead and, and, and do that, especially with some of the dialogue that's in the game, like talking about like jubbly bits and um other like euphemisms for breasts and other things that was not taken out and censored at all but then to censor out an image in a dlc so it's not even like general availability like you'd actually go pay money for this to to get it like it's just such a weird thing for nintendo to censor i don't i don't get it yeah this reminds me of um the was this the hercules game for ds where they did this same kind of a thing yeah, I remember something. There was the it happened. I wrote a something times. about that. I remember when I noticed it. I wrote about it. Let's see just, if I can find the article while you're continuing on. Yeah, just it's really weird. I mean, Nintendo's always been kind of that way. Obviously, they're they're the family friendly group, but it's not even a racy photo. It's just a picture of one of the characters that's in a bikini, and it's not even something that all, you'll you'll be able to see really unless you go to this one square in the map, and you get to see a bunch of other costumed. Um, people i think there's two guys and two girls that they show you um but for some reason this one was deemed um uh too racy which is really kind of funny because nintendo released an actual statue of the same girl (laughs) a physical statue they licensed it and it's actually even worse because it's she's bent over a stack of stuff and you could see her whole hindquarters on this statue that nintendo licensed for people to make so they're obviously okay with this character being like over sexualized but uh yeah for some reason this uh dlc uh, that that small little image that really doesn't even look that great has been censored by nintendo of america i found the article i was talking about it was glory of heracles yeah nintendo ds don't look at my bum you bum looker great title thanks great title yeah there you go yeah, that was that on the arts, the the actual mm-hmm. the the main art or whatever. The art that they released, yeah, no. for the for the game. Yeah, bizarre, bizarre. Yeah, Nintendo does this. Um, yeah, I, I don't. It was understand. the same thing. They took another. They took the the art for another character and they placed <clears> it in front of the uh, in front of the offending bottom. <laughs> the Photoshop mentality. Let's just let's just clone tool this problem mm-hmm. away. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Wow. Anyway, so there you go. If uh, if you're buying the U.S. version, you get the lesser version, even though it's not even the Japan, Japanese version is even that good. So never mind. Don't look on look online. You'll see that it's not a big deal. All right. Okay. Uh, last but not least, um, uh, the Wiki group. Um, they're the hacking group that f- made one of the first um, uh, mod chips for the Nintendo Wii has reported this week um, that they have completely reversed the Wii U drive authentication, disk encryption, file system, and everything else that is needed for this next generation key. So they basically said that um, they can make a device that is essentially an optical drive emulator, and it's currently compatible with all Wii U models from all regions, and it uses an embedded Linux system. 
So it's a separate device that they plug into a Wii U that allows them to pirate every single game ever. Why can't yep. these guys just go away? Uh, because, because there's, there's money. money to be made yeah, by stealing. Money. I under, okay, I understand why they won't go away, but <laughs> like this, the system is already kind of like circling the drain, and now this comes out. This could be like the the death knell. Um, yeah. The, yeah, this I could guess, be all it takes to prevent any. You know, if this thing becomes reasonably widespread and people start modding their Wii U's, and Nintendo doesn't have the ability to remotely detect and shut them down. Mm-hmm. Um, which I'll get to in a second. I think they may have that ability. Um, then, you know, why? If I were a developer, why would I? Why would I invest in developing for for the console? Exactly. If I, it's reasonable to believe that things would be stolen. I mean, the Wii was very <laughs> widely pirated, mm-hmm. um, but the console still sold really well, and mm-hmm. a lot of companies made a lot of money on it. Yeah, like every uh, console that had a high rate of piracy um, sold well. And, yeah, and did the 360 well. is another example. Well, the crazy f- amounts of piracy on the 360 for sure. And the first was the PlayStation. I mean, mod chips of the PlayStation were trivial to install, um, and yeah. people were buying consoles constantly because they could put mod chips on them and never buy a game, which which drove up the install numbers, which caused more games to be developed for it. So, I mean, I guess there was a bit of a benefit there. Um, yeah. But the but Wii, those all came around after the systems were established. Totally, totally. Um, this this would just be horrible. Um, I guess the good thing is that all your Nintendo Wii U's are always online. Um, Nintendo can just push out, push out a fix that will fix this. Um, of course, if you have an older console that's been taken offline, maybe you won't get that patch and it would work. Yeah. But then newer games could be um, basically made to, to look to make sure that your console's at a certain version. So... I guess this starts the cat and mouse game. It does. That Nintendo did with the Wii. Like, there is new versions of the Wii U menu system that would disable the the mod chips, and then they would come out with some other hack, and they would come out with ways to, to do different mods, and they would do that. Um, I just hope that, it, that it, would, it would skip this generation because you don't really see much on the PlayStation 3. There was there was that the PS3 key for a while, which is this little yeah. USB device you'd plug in. Um, but that kind of went away. I guess the 360 people are still able to do that. I mean, there was like people that were like flashing the firmware on their drive and doing all sorts of weird things. So I guess that exists. But yep. it, it's not as easy as ripping a, a, a game to a hard drive and then plugging it in on this with the special device that seems pretty trivial and scary when you're a, yeah and a, a on the developer. Wii you don't even need to hard hardware mod a Wii to pirate games on it it's that's all software so you know that's there's no that one's way easier than even this would be these exactly. these kinds of hardware mods are usually not that not used that much mm-hmm. uh, I mean we'll see we'll see what happens and the reason I talked about Nintendo you know, cutting these down remotely is Nintendo's response to this news when they were asked by the press to, you know, for a comment on this was that, that they do not have any records of anybody running games on a modded console, Mm -hmm. which implies that maybe they have the ability to detect something like that. Um, Sure. If that's the case, then maybe they could stop these kinds of things. Maybe when they actually build one of these mod chips and install it and put that system online, Nintendo will see it and, you know, either brick or block that console. Mm -hmm. Um, That would be a really interesting turn of events, but, you know, I find it hard to imagine that Nintendo would be able to outfox something like that. You know what I mean? Because when there's, whenever there's, Whenever there's things to be stolen, there will be someone who finds a way to steal it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So. Where, where, where there's a will, there's a way, and uh, yeah, and people will do it. But anyway, I hope this stays away. I, I yeah, me too. Like I said, the system's already circling the drain, and I, I don't want, uh, I don't want it. At to, this point, there's nothing to steal on the system. <laughs> I mean, it, <laughs> there's that the new Mad. Oh, wait a second, that's not even. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, see, and those are always the games that get pirated the most, you know, the Maddens and the Call of Duties and stuff like that. So, yeah, maybe if you don't allow those games on your system, they won't pirate them. Hey, sure. maybe Nintendo's being smarter than we give them credit for. Yeah. And this this makes me recognize, though, why, why, Microsoft is, why Microsoft's next console is going to be this always, on, always online DRM thing. Yeah. Um, they're trying to prevent the kind of widespread piracy that happened with the 360. Exactly. And... Um, I can understand that 
the, the desire to do that, mm -hmm. but I think it's a waste of time because it's not going to stop the hackers. It's just going to be an inconvenience for the people who don't break the rules. As DRM usually is. Yes. Definitely is. Awesome. Well, I think that's going to about do it for this episode of the Nintendo Pulse podcast. Let's get some music going. Um, yeah. Thanks to everybody that's been talking to us and, and emailing in and all that. We'd love to hear it. Love to hear more. Head on over to vgpodcast.com and uh, l let us know uh, what you think. Head on over there. Click contact us at the top of the page and, and, and let us know. Email us directly at vgpodcast at gmail.com. Or you can call our voicemail line, which is area code 505-VG-PODCASTS. We do have forums up and everything else. Follow us on Twitter. I'm at Dazmi on Twitter. Steven is at Steven J. Munn. And until next week, guys, have fun with your Nintendo consoles. Uh, if there's games to play on your Wii U, play them. I, I picked up Spider-Man, The Amazing Spider-Man, today because that game isn't old enough. But it just came out on the Wii U, and I was happy to pick up a new Wii U game. <laughs> do stuff like that, people. <laughs> <laughs> we'll Buy talk. terrible games that are too expensive because yeah. it was only Nintendo 40 bucks. It was only 40 bucks. It was okay. Something. It was okay. Anyway, guys, <laughs> <laughs> take it easy and we'll talk to you next week. <laughs>